Yeah, so the last couple of years, the Music Fest was something um, that I sort of grassroots started to do. Gosh, I think I did them. I'd have to go back and look. Um, and this year, so one of the things that I've been focusing more on recently is um, more of our social media stuff. So there was a little bit of resource juggling that had to happen internally mm -hmm. for us to um, continue having, um, the, doing sort of the music portion of the celebrations. So that was actually taken in-house by, I believe, a, the majority of the work on that was done through the moles. Um, I did reach out to a few of the people who have performed over previous years to see if they were interested in participating this year. But aside from that, I was a little more hands-off with the music um, fair this year. Uh, and I think they actually ran it a little bit longer. It was only two days. I know we've done three days before. And I believe each day ran a little bit longer. And they had everybody do an hour-long set, whereas um, in the past, we had sort of a mix, half-hour sets, hour-long sets, and I think we did a couple fewer hours each day. So really, it was just small things like that. All in all, the, the spirit of the event was still the same, really, mm -hmm. to just celebrate and appreciate the music, particularly the live music community in, uh, in Second Life and a lot of the mm -hmm. talent that there is there. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. There are some fantastic musicians who come into Second Life and perform. I, I just love it. We had a good range at uh, OBR this year, One Billion Rising, and it's so exciting. I can see so. the, the audience are cheering for live music too. So <laughs> you're, you're in charge of social media and community, all things community related uh, for Second Life. I, I presume this gives you a marvellous excuse for shopping, checking out music, exploring the grid, all that kind of goodness. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I never really needed a good excuse to shop. <laughs> 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 I just enjoy it. I, I love seeing the creativity of the the merchant community whether it's clothing hair shoes i just furniture I, hmm. oh um so yeah sorry i was hearing my voice again somehow that was a little strange um so so yeah so there's uh just so much to explore um even just going around and looking at the the builds and things that people put together one of the things that i've really seen and again i you know keep talking about shopping and merchants but as you'll see, if you go to the shopping event, the creativity just in the way that the booths are set up, to me that is so amazing how yes. um, we have these brands and merchants that have such strong, they can implement into just even the way that they make those shops look. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's kind of a mall setup, which is great for navigation. Mm -hmm. But if you go to each booth, you will just see the unique sort of signature stamp of each of the merchants as they put those booths together. It's really cool. So everything from sim builds or region builds, sorry, I know we always make patch twitch when we say sim. Um, <laughs> no, it makes me twitch too, it's not just sim. Uh, but the region builds, um, the creativity in the exhibits, the art, all of it, I really just, it's every year, but I, I sometimes I'm astounded and I can't believe I get paid to do what I do. It's awesome. It's really fantastic. And the social media stuff is, you know, that wasn't really where my background was initially. So coming in and being able to spend some more time and resources focusing on that front um, has been really incredible. Um, and I like to really, hopefully, be able to contribute and really just continue to show life is to people who maybe have either forgotten and or haven't been exposed to it yet. Um, mm -hmm. And I kind of see the social media channels as a, uh, as a decent platform to be able to do that. It's kind of like, you know, Second Life, if you're in Second Life, you get it. If you're not, sometimes you need somebody to explain it to you. Mm. And uh, the social media aspect inside of what I do, I really feel you know, show people that any misconceptions that they might have um, 
are more than made up for by the creativity, really cool stuff that's going on here. So, I come back to you on on social media because I've got a few more questions to ask about that. But I want to turn to Strawberry for a moment because Strawberry, you're a really well known Second Life resident before you became a Linden. Um, a lot of Lindens and moles too have quite prominent um, Second Life identities, but they kind of get a bit hidden. But people know that you're Strawberry Linden and Strawberry Zinn. Yeah. Was that a conscious decision? Well, it was because um, I had to cut down on my blogging and I had to announce mm. it. And you know, although I was given advice by Patch Linden to perhaps not reveal uh, and maybe create a new identity and so forth, but I figured like everybody would recognize my work, my voice, especially when I'm doing the tutorials and so forth. Yeah. And so I, you know, it kind of was backed in the corner and had to announce it uh, and let people know. A little bit, you know, regretting that now. <laughs> 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 but, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. <laughs> so you've come on board as um, a marketing content specialist, and you're focused completely on Second Life, aren't you? Yes, I am completely uh, on Second Life and creating videos and you mm -hmm. know images and other kind of content for marketing purposes and so forth. Which is possibly why the photos that I got for this year's um, <laughs> posters are so gorgeous. Well, I didn't do patches. His is really nice. <laughs> but yeah, I did, I did these with the others, yeah. Um, but you're working on creating tutorials too. Uh, what sort of things are you going to be focusing on? What sort of tutorials are you um, bringing out? So my main focus right now is trying to help get over the hurdle that newcomers normally have when they first join. So I'm starting with basics, um, you know, how to sign up and how to walk around, how to purchase Linden's. I'm going to get into editing your shape, um, you know, buying mesh heads, mesh bodies, wearing them and, you know, modifying them. It's going to go from beginner to intermediate to advanced. Eventually, I want to get into um, photography and machinima tutorials, uh, get into possibly the debug settings if I'm if I'm allowed to do that and, and you know and show how mm. show people what they can do in a cell um, so that it's gonna take me a while to get there but I'm slowly I'm gonna build up I'm just starting with the basics right now so that's my main focus of course I do a lot of other things but I really want to try and make it easier for people to you know I remember the first time I logged into SL, I logged out and didn't log back in for a couple of weeks because I was just so lost. So I just want them to be able to get over that hurdle quicker and, you know, join us. Mm. In the world. Well, will you be doing things like, you know, how to move furniture around and that sort of thing? Yeah, once I teach myself that, sure. <laughs> Walking up a spiral staircase would also help me. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, it's for the current community as well as the newbies. But you are yeah. going to try and right get now, people on board. Right. Right. Mainly I'm focused on the newbies, just trying to get people to sign up, log in, and move around. And then eventually it'll be for the current residents when I get into more, you know, machinima or mm. photography or whatever. I'm, I'm taking requests too. I see people leaving comments like, you should do this. Mm. And, you know, I'll try to figure it out and so forth. Yeah. It's a fun thing to be doing. So what sort of techniques will you be using? Will you be... um having any streaming sessions where people can join in? Because that's one of the big things you've done as a resident. Well, funny you say that, Zayola. <laughs> you want to tell them about I was what giggling we have planned? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tell them? Yeah, so so one of the things, I mean, this, this comes from a couple of different areas. One, it's going to be 
you know, so much fun. Um, two, we've seen, as you maybe have seen more of the video content that we've been publishing on our social media, the Love Made in SL, the Destination mm -hmm. Guide videos, video content just grabs people's attention more mm -hmm. than static sometimes. That's not to say we've got some really stunning Flickr pictures that we've shared that have really garnered a, a lot of interest and engagement. But um, so, so having Strawberry come on board, we started, her and I started talking about what we could do with that and, and what we could do um, in terms of creating more video content. So we're actually putting our heads together and working on something on the streaming side of things um, that we would like to roll out sometime after the, the kerfuffle and hubbub of this <laughs> amazing 16th birthday event kind of settles down. That's like right on our list next to tackle. So you should be seeing something from us in the future. If anybody has any ideas for names that would be good, please let us know. <laughs> We're still around those details in our brains and trying to come up with some ideas about what we want to call it. But it will basically be some live streaming. Some weeks you'll get Q&A. Some weeks you'll get us exploring life. Some weeks we'll talk about some of the same stuff that Strawberry will be tackling in the tutorials because we know that there are people who are always looking for more um, information on how things work. Like mm -hmm. just before we started here, I was pulling <laughs> Strawberry like, hey, do you know, how do I make sure that the, the lips move on my head while I'm talking, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And so, yeah. So it's going to be sort of a variety show. Maybe sometimes, I don't know if we'll get Strawberry to do a song and dance for us, but uh, <laughs> it's on my list. <laughs> we'll do Nobody some choreographed do dancing. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> um, maybe we'll do some like, uh, what is that scene from Young Frankenstein, the putting on the Ritz uh, scene? Yes. Come out and just dance around with our top hats. <laughs> Um, but yeah, <laughs> so, so, so yes, so we'll be doing that and you'll be seeing more of that from us, hopefully sometime in July. Um, we definitely need to fine tune the details and, and figure it out. We'd be using YouTube. Um, we were thinking about testing out doing some streaming on Facebook and we may still do a test there as well and see, but I think mm. we'll probably start with YouTube. That's fantastic. And the Second Life channels get increasingly popular, I think, on YouTube. That's really interesting for me. The last uh, year or so, see, we launched our we launched our Instagram about a year ago. I think it was Instagram mm -hmm. was for around the fifteenth for an Instagram account, and so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, so we rolled that out and it's, it's really cool to see sort of that, the, the different audiences across those and Instagram's mm -hmm. actually been growing really, really, really phenomenally. And it's so cool to see so many people, um, Do you their platforms and experiencing Second Life for the first time through exposure from Instagram and then YouTube with mm -hmm. the video content. That's just something that we pay more attention to and spend more time with. And we just haven't had the resources. So having Strawberry come on board has really been mm. a benefit for us to be able to explore some more of these um, these things, like being able to stream and do more video content. It's like mm. super exciting. She's been really helping with a lot of the content from, from that aspect. When I want to do a social media post, for example, a couple of the the international and national days, uh, she's been able to throw some stuff together really quickly for me to be able to utilize for that. And it's it's been awesome. That's great and really exciting. And yes, someone said that uh, Flickr has a huge Second Life community. Yes, yeah, no, I mean, we've been doing the pick <coughs> of the day from there for years. Um, that was an older program that had kind of dwindled off when I came on board and I resurrected it. Pick of the day has always come from Flickr. There's mm. a lot of really great stuff there. I just, I mean, unfortunately for me, Flickr hasn't really been performing the same since they switched over their servers. So I, there are days when I can't even get on there. Um, for whatever reason, it just doesn't load for me. So I'm still getting used to uh, the idea of, you know, mm. places you, for really good content. Do you find that the demographics are slightly different on different platforms so that you might find um, 
a younger crowd, say, on Instagram than you would on Flickr? Absolutely. Or is it hard to tell? Um, Flickr, it's hard to tell. I would definitely say Instagram and Facebook, there is a tremendous difference. Um, and let's not forget Plurk. Plurk is one of those strange little platforms that is so popular with a lot of Second Life yeah. users. And I, I think that they're probably in business because of Second Life users, because <laughs> I don't know anybody else who uses it. And whenever I bring it up to vendors and stuff like, you know, we have this, you know, quirky little platform that our users really enjoy. Is there a way, any way we could get integration? They're all like, huh, what? Ooh, plurk. Yeah, what's it um, <laughs> But yeah, especially I... it's it, there's definitely a big difference between the people. I mean, there's overlap, of course, um, but yeah. the tone and mood of what we see on Instagram versus what's on Facebook is very different. Um, there's so much positivity on Instagram, which is a little surprising for me because I know in this day and age we kind of live in a world where people are feel free to say whatever they want to say, sometimes mm. positive, sometimes negative. But Instagram has just been a really positive space there, and it's it's been awesome. Whereas Facebook, we see a little bit more uh, commentary sometimes, uh, you know, much needed always. You know, we're always open to hearing constructive criticisms and feedbacks and mm. things like that. But I definitely notice a difference in tone um, in wise in those places. And mm. not that that has anything to do with age, I don't think, but it's just a uh, – different uh, demographic yeah uh, Twitter is of course notorious for negativity <laughs> yeah actually when I first joined uh, social media doing any social media so I uh, um, here at Linden Lab the Twitter account was actually handled by the PR team Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't utilize it for anything and then I slowly started to put content out there uh, I think using pick of the day, and now we, we use it more regularly. But it is where we keep a close eye on things. Mm. So, Yes, and there are other areas where perhaps not worth going Reddit, for example. <laughs> well, we read Reddit, um, and I know that there's an, a, a strong Second Life um, subreddit mm -hmm. that is not official over there and I've always been to that frame of mind that when brands sort of try to integrate themselves into reddit it's just a uh, invitation for disaster usually I think that's kind of a place for people to to really just have discussions and I mean if we ever see any sort of misinformation out there and things of like that like we want to make sure that people have the correct information we'll you know maybe step in here and there but by and large we just kind of keep our mouths shut and <laughs> and read reddit um, because, yeah, like I said, I think in the past when I've seen brands or entities try to step into the conversation in Reddit, it's just, unless you're doing an AMA, it gets a little, it's a little bit, yeah. uh, disingenuous. Is yeah. that a word? <laughs> I, I know what you mean. I can think of certain blogs that one kind of reads, you know, sort of a kind of hands-off feeling about them. Where they're quite can be quite scary. I, I think the thing is, is again, like I said, we are, we always are open to hearing people's feedback and constructive criticism, um, mm. and their positive feedback. We like that too. Um, but uh, there, I think you always have to have a place where users or community can feel comfortable, sort of just talking about whatever they want to talk about without the. <laughs> Yeah. the company necessarily coming in and being like hey 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 so yes. that's for us I think reddit currently at least um and uh just mentioned another thing discord that's actually something that's interesting sorry to bring it up, bring that up but um take take too much time talking about it that's actually something that I think is really interesting in the idea with the way I've been seeing groups use it for events and things like that I've had a lot of people ask about, you know, would we do an official Second Life Discord, yada, yada. There's been conversations internally. I don't have a yes or no answer on that, but I can say if there would be enough money in the world to pay somebody to moderate <laughs> a Discord channel, we have such a diverse and interesting cross of communities that come together. Like, mm. 
together maybe at some point some kind of a, a, a list of existing SL communities that have formed together. Um, so maybe we'll do something like that where if you guys have Discord communities that you have around Second Life uh, topics and things of that nature, maybe we can put together a list of, of those somewhere and have it so that people can kind of find hmm. things that they're looking for. Because as you know, like here we have everybody comes through, we've heard this, right? everybody comes through the same front door and mm. you may be looking for group and I was just thinking about in terms of the disc of discord channels, like a way for us to kind of uplift if those types of communities already exist there. So yeah, I was thinking the, about. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about the discord channels I'm involved in. And yeah, they're, they're pretty diverse. I mean, there are some that are being used like groups are used or have been used in the past to run events. Uh, and so a large event can have separate channels on a single server for different parts of the event. Fantasy Fair did that. Um, there's a whole lot, I think there's a whole conversation about Discord worth having, but possibly not today, because I want to come back to some other elements of your work. Um, I was going to ask, what were your first impressions when you started at the lab? I mean, Strawberry's yours are pretty recent. Did it seem a whole different world? Was it what you were expecting, or was it wildly different? I don't know if I was expecting anything really. I wasn't sure. I, I kind of knew some of the people already, like Saola, and I had you know met a few Blendons mm -hmm. over the years. But like just joining the company, it was really nice to see how um, like energetic and fun and everybody is, and they just have the love. Like you don't know it as a resident, but they have a lot of love for the platform, and and it was just really nice to see that. Um, and mm -hmm. You know, and everybody was real. Everybody just got all these ideas and always finding new ways. I'm I'm mainly uh, with the marketing team, so it's, they're always like talking about new ways to promote and improve. Mm. And it's just you know, it's it's a great bunch that I work with. And I guess I was ex I, I I didn't expect any different really. Yeah. Mm. But what about you, Sila, when you came in? Because you also were a resident first weren't you yes i was not nearly as much cloud as strawberry <laughs> um but i yeah i was a resident <laughs> since i, I want to say 05 or 06 i always forget um i'll have to look long time yeah um and i think for me it, things surprised me or shocked me but i was definitely impressed again with the level of passion. We have people Saela seems to have cut out. Okay. Yeah, Zyla, if you're there, we lost you. And I think we still lost her. Strawberry, can are you still here? I'm here, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I was going to say I know it's early days, but what aspects of your job would you say you love most? What do I love most? I, mm. I just, well, what I love about the job is actually what I loved about Second Life. What I've always loved about Second Life was to be able to create avatars, update them, dress them up, take pictures and videos. And that's pretty much what I'm still doing. Um, you know, I was blogging before and I'll, I'll be honest, it was starting to take a toll on me, the blogging part. Like, Mm -hmm. Listing style credits was like the bane of my existence. <laughs> <laughs> Tedious. And, it, and, you know, so just being able to can continue to do what I love with the, in this position is just amazing mm -hmm. without having to do all the extra things that I had to do to run the blog or whatever, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. You really needed a sort of secretary running behind you, writing it all down. Yeah, like I didn't mind the writing part. That's one thing I liked about the blogging. I do miss mm. that sometimes writing my thoughts and whatever, but just the whole fashion. And I, I'll be honest, I really didn't like being called an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that word. So it was just taking a toll on me. I was like, I have to, I have to knock this off now. <laughs> so yeah. One of the things that I loved was the way you put out the challenges. Those were fun. 
Yeah, those I actually really loved doing the challenges, and that's something that I brought in now with Ziola, and hopefully we'll continue. We're trying to continue to do them maybe once or twice a month, so you know, mm. keep an eye out for them. Mm. That yes, definitely. Those those are fun, even if I wasn't doing them. Watching what other people made of them was always great. Now, um, are you back, Ziola? <laughs> She's and completely gone. Is, she might be rebooting yes, or something. Gone, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what would you say you find most challenging about your new role? Oh, boy. Most challenging. My manager, Brett Linden, is here. I hope I don't get fired for this. <laughs> okay. He's so telling honestly, me to ask you more questions. Okay. More honestly, questions. The only, the, the really, the, the challenging part so far for me is, I hope I said phrases correctly, basically is learning how to cope, not necessarily cope, but getting used to interacting with the mm. Second Life community now as a Linden Lab employee rather mm. than just a resident. You know, so... I've, you know, I've been a Second Life blogger for over a decade and, you know, I had my fair share of harsh criticism, but now that I'm an employee, it's, it's amplified and the, the dynamic is very different and I'm just finding mm. it challenging on how to deal with that on a daily day-to-day -day basis and it can be overwhelming at times, <laughs> but it is mm. what it is and that's why I was like at the starting saying, maybe I shouldn't have told her. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I'll get used to it that's that's really the only challenge because everything else I'm doing I've been doing for many years and I love it so everything else is great I, I hope that these conversations um, I hope that these meet the Linden conversations do help to build up a picture of what uh, what Linden's are like because a lot of people have this misconception of Lyndon's and I hope that by listening to people talk like this it gives a picture of the kind of things they are involved in and the things they're so passionate about. I hope it helps because honestly the Lyndon employees are just so warm welcoming and they're just full of energy and they really love mm. the platform and you know I mm. see it now clearly you know. Yeah. And you've got a lot of support out here in the audience. I don't know if you can see it. No, oh, thank you, guys. So even before you became a London, did you see how things, how did you feel that social media was involving, evolving over the years? Just for the Second Life channels or just on the whole? Yeah, and and do you think Second Life kind of reflected the way that real life has gone? I, I have my own opinions on this, that I think Second Life is actually less aggressive than outside, even though it has very passionate people involved. I don't know whether you think the same or whether you think it's a a closer echo of real life. I think, I think they both, I think they're similar. And I mean, I feel like Second Life itself is kind of like a social network mm -hmm. and they, they are both echoes of real life. Um, people pretty much do the same things in world here that they do in the real world. And mm -hmm. I, I just want to quickly, because I have a lot of people messaging me, asking me for my Linden Bear. <laughs> <laughs> And I promise, there's uh, there's like 20 of you right now, I promise. I Okay, first of all, I have never made anything in Second Life before in my life. <laughs> so I could res a box before, that was pretty much it. But uh, this, this week, everybody has been asking me, so I took 20 minutes today and I made the most noobish-looking prim Linden Bear, <laughs> strawberry Linden Bear, and I promise I will give it to everybody at the end. So just yes. stay till the don't, end and I'll hand it out at the end. Don't keep asking. Sure. Don't keep asking her now. She's she's busy. <laughs> but and, once and, it's over, and she'll it's sit my first build. And... So please be gentle. Yeah. <laughs> so be kind. Be kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, you can all ask her afterwards, but stop asking her now, please. Okay, so um, Zola was talking a bit about the increase in video content that's been happening recently. Um, what do you think? What What do you think? is driving this desire to watch videos. Do you think it's kind of a reflection of the way people are watching more box sets and things like that? That there's a, people are becoming more accustomed to watching over the web? I think people are more visual than anything. So video just captures their attention, especially when it comes to learning. I know I taught myself how to use Photoshop all through video tutorials and so forth. So I think mm -hmm. video has just become a really important tool, like because of YouTube <laughs> as well, yes. to learn things and to interact with people. YouTubers are becoming celebrities and influencers. Mm -hmm. I hate that word, but you know, <laughs> but so yeah, I, I feel like video is, is uh, really important and uh, it really helps Especially get, getting the message across. Sorry, that's my husband sneezing in the background. But um, <laughs> um, he this especially when it comes to tutorials and so forth. So I think the Second Life channel on YouTube blowing up. Uh, I feel like the content they've been putting out recently, especially with Draxter's destination videos mm -hmm. uh, and so forth, uh, they've been really resonating with a lot of people. So hopefully we'll keep that up. And uh, and, and I've noticed. Even Second Life vloggers themselves, a lot of people that were just bloggers have gone into vlogging. Yes. And it's getting more popular um, as well. Yeah. And of course, things like the Blogger and Blogger Network have helped with that, I think. Or Vlogger and Blogger Network. It's a great it's group to be a part of, yeah. Yeah, Kes is going to kill me for not getting it right. But yeah, Bloggers and Bloggers Network. <laughs> Blogger and Vlogger Network, that's it, yeah. <laughs> Because they actually run courses people can do and discussion sessions. Um, they do a lot of really good stuff if people want to get into blogging or vlogging, which is super. We're getting sad little messages from Zyola here, who's now disappeared, so hopefully she'll come back. Patch, have you had any questions? I've had a couple questions. Oh, hello. Oh, oh we have a sign. I heard her somewhere. Yeah, there hello. we go. Okay. Yay. Sorry about that, guys. Let me log back in just a second. I had to restart my computer. Ah. <laughs> what did I miss? Just kidding. People saying really nice things to Strawberry. <laughs> oh, yes. That's good. That's because they haven't seen the newbie bear yet. <laughs> <laughs> Once they see it, they'll be like, okay, we take that back. Yeah. Well, I'll get back there as soon as I can. I okay. actually had a question for the audience. Mm -hmm. I'd like you guys to, you can, I guess you can send me messages or whatever of video tutorials that you would like to see. Just give me more ideas. Um, what you think is lacking. If you feel like I should focus on a certain topic, I would love to have more ideas. So if you guys have any, feel free to send them to me via IM. And uh, I'll, because I'm doing all the scripts right now, slowly building up the scripts, and then I'm going to record and so forth. It takes me a while, but eventually uh, I would like, love to get more and more ideas. And Zale is back, yay. Yay. Someone was saying they don't know about the bears. Would someone like to explain how the bears work? And, and Zale, you probably need to take your AO off. Because you're floating. <laughs> I've had, floating. I'm, I'm in pieces right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, well the, the Linden bears have been a, kind of a long-standing tradition with us. Um, and, and they don't necessarily have to be bears. I can fondly remember many Lindens and stuff like that who made, um, well, like Blue had a coffee cup, uh, for example, <laughs> um, you know, and things like that. It, it's really supposed to be something that is like a little collectible item or memento um, that, you know, 
if if you ever encountered a linden um and you uh you know wanted to kind of uh i guess remember your experience with encountering that linden you you know we would actually just give you the bear automatically uh in a lot of cases um some people do ask for them and stuff and that's fine too we hand them out um but yeah they're kind of just a fun little collectible item and residents have bears and collectibles too i can't tell you how many times for me personally at least you know i've been asked hey can i have your linden bear and i'll give you mine <laughs> and <laughs> and i get some really cool you know like little things and stuff like that even residents mm -hmm. and stuff have made kind of thrown at me so it's it's just been kind of a, a tradition for as long as i can remember um even as a resident myself i was getting linden bears back in you know late 2004 early 2005 and the tradition continues, although not everyone has made one. Ebe, for example. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <people> like that. <laughs> I've been at the lab longer than Ebe at this point, and I still don't have one. So, so I struggle with the idea. It's for me. I, I have got the the I feel pressure. It's like trying to embody the Linden uh, personality of your, you know, Linden avatar into a bear or other thing. So I think I might take a page out of uh, the book that some other Lindens have and create a couple of different ones. Hmm. But I do have to do it. I do. You do. Happen. Yes. I'm afraid so. <laughs> yes. I've got, I've got some, I've got some, I've also got a lot of Swayze cookie bears. Uh, I've collected over the years. Swayze bears are know. so cute. They are. They are very cute. Okay, so we were talking about social media before oh. you yeah. so abruptly left us. And <clears throat> Strawberry and I were just getting on to the growing popularity of video as oh, a yes. medium. Uh, video over the internet and I was wondering if it's possibly because of things like people now watching box sets over the internet and streaming things over the internet and Strawberry was saying about how she's taught herself to do things through YouTube videos and yeah I agree I've I've done that too I'm always going back there trying to work out how to do things like some panning stuff in premiere and so on yeah there's a lot of stuff that uh i think people learn on the internet now it gets mm. a little dangerous sometimes <laughs> yes <laughs> don't google how to you know do something that could get you electrocuted you know that kind of stuff but uh but yeah there's definitely a demand for that and also just the way that we consume things now um mm. i know for example i you know i play video games while watching twitch while talking to friends on discord while doing so many things i'm splitting my uh, attention in three different ways and mm. you know uh, it's uh, it's the way that we sort of soundbite things and consume things now. I think that's changed and evolved in a lot of ways. Sometimes I'll even be reading a book at the same time. I kind of <laughs> cover so many bases at once. And I think video is just one of those things that is, um, you know, it, it's something that we haven't had as much the idea of resources, you know, being able to take video in Second Life takes time, you know, being able mm. to get everything set up, get it, everything to properly res, um, you know, pan around, figure out what you want to do. And so, um, again, bringing Strawberry on board has been awesome um, to be able to be able to do something more like that. And I know we've done a lot of videos in the past. We've had Draxter. Um, for example, on board helping do, he did the, the Drax files and um, Sination Guide videos that we have been producing mm. um, uh, and putting out, uh, stuff like that. But to have somebody in-house who Strawberry does from both sides now, as a Linden and also as a resident, um, and has the skills to be able to do that, I think is going to be the surface of what we want to do with that um, once once strawberry is a little more situated um, then I'm sure we'll be able to do even more with it I'm excited I, about that I, I was going to before 
uh, you came back, we were just about to hear some questions from Patch, so I'd like to throw it to Patch again. Yes, Ayla, you are clipping sure. a bit. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with my headset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got a few questions. Uh, first one came from Susie. Uh, she's asking, you know, would Linden Lab ever consider increasing support of filmmakers producing quality narrative films in Second Life? Um, absolutely. Uh, we're open to hearing proposals for any types of things of that nature. I think uh, we have in the past I th worked closely with groups, um, and I don't know how many people there are currently still doing films in Second Life on a regular basis. I know I see a lot of really cool by stuff, people who are doing vlogging, people who are doing like, let me show off, you know, my new dance animation. Um, mm. But I don't know, you know, in terms of the larger uh, idea of people doing video uh, films and stuff like that. Um, mm. But yeah, absolutely. Touch with us and, and, and tell us your ideas and we'll, we'll think it over. Talk to the right people and see if it's something that we might be able to It's interesting how how it stays in people's um, stays in people's mind. I still get asked about the Black and Mirror, and I think it was about twenty twelve that we shot the last series of that. I remember and, that. That was awesome. Thank you. That was great fun to do. Yes, uh, animations would be good, but I think, yeah, lip sync that's more accurate would be wonderful. That's pretty much now down to mesh heads. I mean, so few of us are kind of using the default heads these days. And the, the lip sync on the heads is still quite limited. Do you think it might improve? You guys know far more about mesh heads than me. I've just got one I like. Um, I think that, I mean, obviously there's so many uh, layers involved in putting something like a mesh head together with all of the scripting and everything else. I think drive more improvements on that front, as we've seen with other things where, you know, the various creators may push themselves further to try to, to get more and more um, sync happening. I, I, I think that anything is possible for sure. We have such amazing groups of people working on stuff and talented uh, scripters, meshers, textures, all of that, that uh, we'll continue to see lots and lots of improvements on that front. I, I, I kind of forget what life was like without mesh heads. <laughs> these days I kind of it wasn't pretty <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny though I actually still I will run into people who have their default heads and they have made them gorgeous um I mean I definitely uh I remember my first <laughs> avatar and, woo, and I take them out sometimes and I remember I feel like with every new come. mesh head being released, uh, they're they're just becoming more and more detailed and com you know complex and so forth. So I can see uh, the the creators really pushing themselves and mm. you know making even more. Uh, and I love seeing it. So much fun to try on new heads. <laughs> yes, we need to start collecting those things that you'll only hear said in Second Life. <laughs> And that will be That's one of kind them. of morbid, Collecting wasn't it? Heads. <laughs> yeah. so yes. much fun to try on heads. <laughs> it's like, like I said, there's that. Uh, if anybody's seen the movie uh, Return to Oz, with a very, very, very young Feruza Balk as Dorothy, and she meets, uh, I think it's Queen Mamba is her name, and she's got this room full of heads in glass cases that she changes in and out. And that's kind of how I feel sometimes. <laughs> it's like looking through my, my mesh head inventory, my collection of heads. Yes. <laughs> all sitting and as you walk into the room to choose them, they all, their gazes swing round to look at you. 
<laughs> yeah, it'd be funny. But yeah, I, I we need it. I think I think there's a forum thread. Mm. Or <laughs> we need to put out this just like things that you only hear in Second Life. Yes. Yes. And maybe a forum thread about what people would like to see, you know, animations and lip sync things. Yeah, I think that's, I think um, a lot of merchants would love to hear feedback about that stuff. Um, if we have a forum where they can look and see what people are looking for. Mm. I know I've had those moments where... <laughs> If I do any more sort of stage productions, I'd want to get good animations for them. When we did Much Do About Nothing, people were quite limited in what they could do. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's come a long way. I know poses these days, even just static poses, you know, there's a certain mm. weight to them now that there used to not be. Creators have gotten really, really good with making them look like they are an embodiment and have weight to them. I don't know how else to explain it. It's kind of like when you watch a, a TV show and somebody's holding a coffee cup and you can tell by the way they're holding it that it's empty versus yes. it has liquid in it. Yeah, like the, the animations and the static poses that we see now coming out, I think just they have that where it, it, it doesn't just look like a, a an object mm -hmm. being animated. It looks like something with the density is being out of me. I don't know how to explain it better. But that's it. Yeah, that, that's, that's a very good example. Oh, so I think that there'll be ongoing improvements in that area. The, again, creativity uh, of our community being such a driving force of how mm -hmm. far we've come in, in a lot of ways in that regard. So, Do you remember when we first came in that the only drinking animation was the one that had you pouring the drink all over yourself <laughs> I still every animation for me is like that because I my avatar is my my height in outside of second life I've made my mm -hmm. avatar the same height as my as I am and so a lot of the animations I think are created for much taller avatars <laughs> so half the time when I I'm like I'm basically drinking through my eyeball um or <laughs> some other Drinking through the top of my head when I try to take a sip out of something. So it yeah. happens. Gargling with your nose, yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone, okay, Patch, any other questions? And remember, if you want to ask a question, please send it to Patch. Yeah. Um, so I've got, I've got one here that was singled out from, uh, for Strawberry from Kent. Um, Kent wants to know, what made you stand out for Linden Lab to take notice of your uh, vlog or vlogging ability? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you guys tell me. I have no idea. Honestly, I, I don't know what, other than I was just on every social network promoting my blog everywhere. I have no idea why people read my blog as often as I did. Probably because I just talked about a lot of the new things being released and gave details about them and shared every single bit of my style credits, which I really hated doing, but, um, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> but I, mean, I, I think the honestly, quality really speaks for itself. And I mean, I know in the years I've been here so many times I would gravitate to pictures and images to use for our pick of the day, or when we were looking at updating the, the login page. And there would be so many times I would look at the name and it's like, oh, Strawberry Singh. Who is this Strawberry <laughs> Singh person? Well, now you have me blushing. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's true. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess probably because I was just in everybody's face all the time. They like, okay, this chick is everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> so, Patch, I'm going to throw to you for another question. Sure. Uh, this one's for both. Um, I've recently tackled organizing my inventory and closet in quotes, <laughs> which is at 24,439 items. Child. How many items are in your inventory? Strawberry, you go That's first. for Ziola and Strawberry. Uh, I'm only going to tell the items in this Linden avatar. <laughs> in <here. laughs> Not my other avatar. And I'm still under 5,000. Thank you very much. What? I know. <laughs> how old is Linda, how old is your avatar? When was she months. born? Okay, two, two months. months 
Come on, that's not bad. This is true. This is true. That is true. <laughs> come on, Ziola, come out with it. <laughs> well, unlike Strawberry, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about both. My my alt has an amount that would probably get me in trouble with our developers. Um, I've got probably <laughs> close to two hundred thousand items on my uh, uh, here on. Iola, I have 38,000. That's oh, modest. Yeah. yeah. Now, I will I will say my alt being a little bit older than uh, than Ziola, um, a lot of the stuff that I have in there is we had HUDs. And so you had, particularly, I remember going to like, uh, to going to Truth or uh, who else back at Wasabi or any of those hair places where you'd buy a fat pack and it would literally just have every single color as a single object in the, you know, as its individual oh object God. in your folder. That was horrible. <laughs> um, and I've just never gone back and consolidated or organized anything. So to, 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 the, to whoever asked that question, uh, applause to you for taking the time to, to try to organize stuff. Cause I'm now to this day, just today I was trying to remember the name of a necklace that I wanted to wear and I could not remember for the life of me. I could not find it. <laughs> I will just say that when I log on, servers cry. So hey, we didn't share hers. She has to share hers yeah. too. She just said though, she makes us she makes the servers cry. I I do beat you, Zyla, well, on your alt. Now patch. Wow. I I I I think I have that in my shoe folder. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but we won't talk about that. I need to shop more. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shopping enough. Okay, apparently, no, it's, not, it's, it's it's not that bad. I'm at, I'm at, I'm at seventy four thousand, which I think is not bad for two thousand and seven. You know, hey, and I and I know my alt's around one hundred and twenty. Okay, that's not bad at all. That's not bad. That that's good. I mean, I've got lots of magazine pages and things like that from Prim Perfect. <laughs> she says, trying to excuse the fact she has an obscenely large inventory. Yeah. Well, okay. Have Let's have another value. question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's have another question. All right, let's see. Um, so this is a question that's kind of geared towards mobile. Um, you know, uh, we, we heard yesterday, um, you know, from Oz, some, some discussion around mobile and the fact that, you know, we are working on a mobile app and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you see Second Life being used on mobile platforms like tablets or phones, um, you know, from like a marketing perspective and stuff? And, uh, you know, where do you, where, do you, where do you think you see the future with that? Um, Strawberry, do you have thoughts on that? I have thoughts on that, but I... If you have thoughts you want to share, no, you go, go for it. You go. So, so like everybody else, I would love to see a day when it was all Second Life all the time on my phone. I could go onto the treadmill and play around on Second Life on my tablet, or take it to the beach. Um, and I know that there've been some. I think I think maybe Oz talked about this on. Was that Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday. Mm. Yeah, um, about you know people were asking would there be another sort of solution like that. I don't I don't know that that that's necessarily something. Considering how expensive that ended up being, I think it was that we um, for people to pay to have that kind of service. But with uh, with mobile, I, I think the most important piece for me, what I would really like to see in it outside of that pie in the sky ideal is just that the ability to be connected. So if I am in groups and I want to talk to people or I need to contact the folks on my friends list, that sort of thing, um, mm -hmm. that would be like the most important key part of it for me. Of course, I would love to shop through mobile, but it probably would keep me out of trouble if that weren't the case. <laughs> um, that kind of thing would be amazing. But I mean, like everybody else, again, pie in the sky, I would love to see the full thing on on there but I just I don't know that that's feasible considering how complex and rich of uh, of an experience um, Second Life is mm. I think trying to run that on a phone it might I don't know <laughs> can your can your phone even handle it you know can your phone handle yeah. all this awesomeness 
I think it, I mean, it's great for people who need to log in like a creator or something, if they need to get into an event to do something to update, but I can't see myself playing on a mobile device for hours. Like I remember we had the SL go or something for a while and I, I mm. used that and it, it, it was actually pretty decent because it was all in the cloud and so forth. Mm. Um, but I couldn't, I didn't really want to sit there on a little tablet playing SL. I'd rather have my nice big screen and see everything. And you can't really do machinima and photography and stuff on a tablet either. So. No. Yeah. I think it would be quite good if you could use it through one of the packages where you put your phone in and get the 3D experience. But I don't think that's going to happen with Second Life ever. It may happen with Sansar, I guess. Which is a word that hasn't been used a lot this week in conversation, actually. <laughs> well, you know, it is Second Life's birthday, so. It is. We like to talk about Second Life. So right now, Second Life is our our, our uh, favorite focus. topic. Cool. <laughs> favorite topic and focus this week. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Patch, uh, final question, maybe? Ooh, final. Hmm. Let's oh, see. Oh, so you have a couple more. Um, I do have a couple more. Okay. Um, one of them is for both. Um, you know, how do you handle like in your, you know, working over the blogs and stuff like that, and reading things? Um, you know, sometimes there's uh, a stigma around Second Life and some naysayers. You may hear some interesting things, uh, you know, discussed out there. You know, how do you handle like? facing critical situations like that when you're confronted with them and, you know, respond to them. Strawberry, you have some experience with that, yeah? <laughs> That's what was. both sides. <laughs> That's what I was saying. That was the, the, the challenging thing for me is handling that as an employee. As a resident, I, I didn't really care. <laughs> so, I mean, I actually took the criticism and I learned from it if it was constructive, but if it was just somebody, you know, trolling or whatever I just let it go but uh, I as an employee you just kind of have to look at everything and see what people are saying and because it's just people for people people are frustrated and maybe they have issues going on and um I don't know <laughs> it's I'm it's challenging for me still I'm still trying to figure that out as an employee mm. what about you Layla? um for me I try so you know you get a thick skin of course doing community and social media anywhere um, it gets even thicker and uh, when you're dealing with communities that feel so very strongly about the product that you are working for and on and that's not a bad thing um, but sometimes it can be um, some days you wake up inside out and you're a little raw and somebody says something in the comment and you're just like can I go back to bed <laughs> but <laughs> But, but what I really try to do is I try to look at saying not how they're saying it. So if somebody is saying something and the tone is really sort of uh, negative, I try to focus more on what the message is than the way that the message is being transmitted. Now, granted, I, stu I am a firm believer, call me old-fashioned, in the old idea that you can catch more bees with honey. Um, and I'm always happy to read people's <laughs> comments who, who take a little time to be diplomatic in their criticisms. I think that's an important uh, human ability to, to speak the truth and do so diplomatically. Um, but, I, but I do just, like I said, I try to focus on the message of what they're saying instead of how they're saying it. And that gets me through a lot of, mm -hmm. of those days where it's just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> if I... And I also think that, you know, there are so many other people who are in similar roles that, as we are who deal with this on a much larger scale. I see large companies. One of the comments I think I read the most is fix your servers. And every time I see <laughs> some large company like a, you know, big gaming company or something like that get a comment that's from somebody saying fix your servers, I think, okay, we're not alone in our in, in what we're <laughs> facing. So... <laughs> Did you did you ever watch the series The Guild, the web series The Guild? Oh yeah, I've I seen remember parts of it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, in the last series, it was about the abuse that 
the makers of the the game that everyone loved. The it was about the abuse they were getting from fans. <laughs> Which, yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I see people but, talking about that. We definitely have a really. I love that our community is not afraid to tell us what they're thinking, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think any company that's trying to operate in the dark without that kind of a feedback loop, um, whether it's, you know, us reading the, the blogs or reading blogs, um, the forums, that sort of thing, or not, I think it is, it's such a valuable asset and interest to us to pay attention to that stuff. It doesn't mean that we can do everything everybody wants all the time, um, but it certainly is a way for us to have the most valuable um, feedback that we can get. Uh, for every time we get those hurtful comments or <laughs> barbed comments, um, you know, we also get such incredibly nice things said as well, and so it all balances out in the end. Hmm. So. Patch, one last question? Yeah, I've got one more. Um, and again, for both. Do you have any advice for up-and-coming bloggers? Oh, Strawberry, this is so you. <laughs> <laughs> advice. I'd say just be true to yourself and don't do it if you don't love it because you really have to love it. <laughs> and I loved it for so many years and at the end it was just kind of um, taking a toll on me so just keep keep it keep it fresh um, be yourself and share what you want and you're and also grow thick skin because you're going to get positive comments and negative comments and and you got to take it all in and you got you can learn from it I mean that's all the construct constructive criticism I got over the years from from my blogging bury your hands are too short your arms are too short or your head is too big or something it helped and it helped me develop my skills better improve my avatar and and um, you know it helps so listen to what people are saying and also but do what you want at the same time yeah Say hello. <laughs> that seems, yeah. That seems a good oh, note sorry. to finish on. <clears throat> that seems a good note to finish on, maybe. To talk about what you love and doing what you love. Yeah, absolutely. I was only just going to further add on to what Strawberry was saying. Um, I know a lot of people, when they first get into blogging or blogging, it's almost like you want to take every job you, you, that you possibly can, but I think it's super important to not burn yourself out, to not overcommit. Um, I know a lot of uh, merchants who take on bloggers have played with their guidelines on what they would like to see and what they wouldn't over the years because they knew they know that it started to become a problem where you have one blogger blogging for 15 brands and they each want you to blog three things a week and that kind of thing. And it's just, you, I think the key is to, again, really know what you love and make your commitments and not overbook yourself because it's mm. really easy to get burnt out if you find yourself at, you know, four o'clock in the morning when that's not your usual time to be awake, <laughs> trying to put uh, trying to put an outfit together to meet a deadline. Um, when, it, when it starts to feel like a job, I guess, is, uh, is when you need to kind of reconsider. Mm you know, where to, where to put your, put your time and resources. Definitely. Okay. Well, I would like to say thank you to Strawberry and Zyola for coming here today to talk to us. And I'd like to say thank you to Patch and the Moles and the Lindens who've made this run really smoothly. And I'd also like to say thank you to um, the audience who've been brilliant today. Uh, I was going to mention one thing that's here at the birthday that people might be interested in. Uh, this is because I'm a kitty cat fan and the new kitty cats, the birthday kitty cats, are out. I believe. Uh, I'm not sure where you can pick them up. Maybe Callie uh, is in the audience and can tell us where to pick them up.